come to this project with many of the same assumptions that you have concerning the Jersey Devil murders and the guilt of Jim Seward. His characterization as a troubled young man responsible for a spree of horrific ritualistic homicides. What really happened that night? And is Jim Seward truly responsible? Most people, when they commit a crime, aren't being videotaped, like, you know, when they're doing it or, like, near the time when they're doing it. It was like spying in on, on this crime about to happen. No one else had the opportunity to commit those murders except for Mr. Jim Seward. I feel weird about it. Yeah, I know, no, me I, too. This whole idea to come out into the woods and stuff. You know, suddenly they want to jump into doing, you know, big time live, you know, from the Pine Barrens and have radio and internet and this and that. And, uh, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a fiasco. I, I, I didn't really think it was going to end up like it did, but I knew it wasn't going to look pretty. The attacker was using both hands with two weapons and was ambidextrous. Two separate instruments were driven into the victims at the same time. I think to anybody, if you found 47 pieces of a, of a human being or human beings, it would be very disturbing. The whole thing reeks of a setup. More, more went down than, than we know. Jim's an innocent man, and this was not investigated in any way, shape, or form. The one thing about this with, uh, you know, this guy Jim, uh, you know, the, the case they built up against him, it was all circumstantial. They didn't have any actual evidence that he did this, but, uh, I mean, he was the only one there. Also, if he's an innocent man, there's a killer on the loose. As they said on Factor Fiction, you decide.